equal opportunities are big in Norway. For a long time, many of the Norwegians involved in politics and state enterprises have been female. Now, this is also true of the private sector. Companies listed on the stock exchange must legally ensure that 40% of their executives are women. Kirsty Karuti is one of these women. She's the head of an international consultation firm and a member of the boards of five enterprises, from technology to real estate. We have a huge population of women who have the leadership experience that they are asking for. And unless you use quotation as a tool, which we know experience-wise is the tool that quickest will implement a change, this will take thousands of years. And we will you know, continue making reputative uh, copies of ourselves. And for the world, we will then lose the innovation power that lies in, uh, in diversity. The quota law has opened up opportunities in Kirsty's own career, which she might otherwise not have had. This has given me a immense opportunity to be a part of the network, contribute to the network, but also get back from the network. And if this law hasn't been, hadn't been there, this opportunity hadn't been for me. The progressive step of making the quota into a law came from a man, the former Conservative Minister of Trade and Commerce. At that time, the proportion of women on Norwegian management boards was roughly 7%, as is still the case in Austria. My motivation was first and foremost the, to use the whole population. They were educated, both girls and boys, for the last 20, 30 years equally. And it was, let me say, it was first and foremost for creating value in the company to use all our resources. It was not an equality question first of all. Before you announced the quota, you didn't consult a single government member, not even one from your own party. Why was that? Well, that was very easy because if I have asked, I would have, the answer would have been no. So I did it without asking anyone, not, my, not the prime minister, not my party leader, not the parliament group, no one. And that was calculated and I knew that if I do it my way, I will get the goal and I got it. What was the reaction? The reaction was uh, hell in a way. It was trouble all over. Uh, but after one and a half year, uh, when it came up in the parliament, it was a very wide range of party who supported me in the end. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's not a question anymore in Norway. Elsewhere, the quota is still in question, and every week more questions are asked. People everywhere want to know more about Norway's experience with women in the economy. These future female executives are clear on the subject. Benja Stig Fagerland is a company consultant who trains women in business operations and management. Both she and her husband take equal care of their daughters. I actually think it's more 60% you and 40% me. Because Tua is taking the girls to kindergarten and school every day. And uh, you are a member of the parents group or the school here, Coffee School. I think that's the part of the whole equality, isn't it? That, that depending on, of course, I think depending on the kind of work that uh, both the mother and father steps in when, when needed. Benja seeks out female managers for a state project called Pearl Divers. The whole point of the process for the project was to uh, get the companies to focusing on who is uh, our talents in our organizations and, and uh, make them be aware of all the female talents that they already had in their own organization. And therefore they had to dive after female pearls that had the competence and also had the ambitions to take management positions, but uh, females that they haven't you know, included into the top positions yet. We meet Norway's most prominent opponents of the female quota, 
Trigfir Hegnar is a media tycoon and a ship owner. He collects ships' figureheads, strong women fashioned out of wood. But what troubles him more than anything about the quota is the fact that it represents government interference in the private sector. I believe that the majority of businessmen in Austria would say, how? Should I not control my own business concerns? How? Shouldn't I decide who sits on my committee? Must I find a woman? Must I? They have taken these rights away from business owners. For me, that is the decisive factor. And what I find really extraordinary is that no one has dared to say no. It is not saying no to women's rights. It's not doing that. Man sagt nicht nein zu 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 Frauenrechte. Tut das nicht. Norway's women have always been regarded as independent. When their husbands went to sea, they were often left on their own for months on end. Nowadays, a progressive family policy has brought Norway a high birth rate along with their high rate of female employment. Man and wife in family and society is a constant theme for Norwegian artists. In order to share out childcare in a better way, there is an 80% wage continuation during maternity leave in Norway and obligatory paternity leave. After work with Kirsty and her family. Her husband Jan believes that gender equality in the economy is not a women's issue, but rather a managerial issue. When you get too many old guys with the same background, the same um, uh, schooling, uh, education and clubs and so on, it, it just doesn't work. You have to have uh, uh, much more variety in, in, the, in the board to get uh, enough of, uh, of other missions and other sides. I think it's going to be really interesting to see both in leadership teams and in boards now, whether or not uh, the one with diversity will win or lose. I think like Jan that the one that had diversity coming into the crisis are better positioned. Businesswoman Kate Rodin is convinced that companies with more women in management positions and on supervisory boards are better administered. We don't feel the same harm of the crisis as it seems to be in all the countries. It's not one re single reason for that. But I cannot ignore that uh, maybe the influence from females at least this gender act has improved our strength to meet uh, the crisis. Maybe decisions hasn't been taken that is too risky, I don't know. But anyway, the fact is that Norway has this gender act today and we are not suffering so heavily as other countries are. So what advantage does it hold for the man when his wife is a board member? A lot of nice dinners. The, yeah, 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 yeah. I've been, I've been, I've been uh, to a lot of nice board dinners. I've, I've been a partner uh, yeah. at, at, <laughs> when the board members uh, uh, could, could take their partners. Uh, that would be me and some uh, mostly uh, women. <laughs> it uh, have happened that I have, uh, have uh, made a small speech for the partner. <laughs> Not everyone is so enlightened. In Norway, the quota law continues to arouse much debate. <laughs>